It's either a Demaray or a Demari. Old Tiberius Demari. I don't know who made it. This is probably John Demaray. I don't know who it is. Hey, bug farmers. Welcome to Bug Farmer Beekeeping, where we dive into the world of apiculture, beekeeping, and bees every week. This is the place to share laughs, explore bees, and learn together, all without taking ourselves too seriously. To join our buzzing community, it's easy and it's free. Just hit the subscribe button, ring that bell, and let's cultivate beekeeping knowledge and fun together. Now, let's get into the bees. All right, well, welcome to part of my basement. This is a, uh, this is a part of the uh, house that you usually don't see, but this is uh, on the other side of my shop. My shop is behind that wall right there in the other storage room that you always see me going back to to get uh, frames and whatnot. Well, that lives right there on the other side of that door. This door is to keep the cat from going into my shop area and getting itself hurt. Anyways, it is February 17th. You're probably wondering what I have all of this equipment laying around for. Well, I tell you what, it is getting warmer and warmer every day. And starting Tuesday, the temps are going to be above freezing perpetually until next winter, which means that my girls are gonna wanna split themselves. They're gonna wanna swarm and I've got some splits to do. And I tell you what, I don't want to lose my bees this year. And I also don't wanna have weak colonies, which means that I'm going to be doing Demaray splits this year. I am not going to split and create separate colonies. I'm going to try to keep all of my bees inside of their hives. That is why I've got 60 medium boxes right here. And I've got enough frames to fill 60 medium boxes. So that's uh, that's the plan. We've got a lot of work to do. I've got to get all of those frames into those boxes. And then I've got to fill all of these deeps with, uh, with the frames that I've got stacked here in the other room. Like I said, we are doing Demaray splits. And what Demaray splits mean, that means that I'm going to be keeping the queen and about three frames of bees down in the bottom box, along with a bunch of empties. We're going to put a queen excluder on top of the brood chamber, stack two or three, I haven't decided yet, empty medium supers above that queen excluder, and then stack another deep super with the remainder of the brood frames from the original box where the queen was above another queen excluder on the top. And that is going to allow the queen to keep laying down on the bottom, believing that she has already swarmed and that she has no need to swarm. The girls up top will continue to rear the brood, keep it warm until it hatches out. And by that time, we ought to be knee deep in a flow, which means that those girls will forget all about swarming and just try to backfill all of the boxes. The, uh, the second queen excluder on the top will also prevent any queen that may hatch from any of the eggs that are up in the top from getting back down into the hive and forcing a swarm. So that is the uh, that is the plan. You're also gonna notice that right here, I've got stacks and stacks and stacks of frames. Well, this is all drawn comb from last year and I've got it sitting here airing out and it is ready to go. So I'm probably going to seed some of those boxes with some drawn comb, but for the most part, we are going to use new comb on that. Anyways, the goal for me today is to get all of this work done. My son is going to come down here into the basement and help me. We're going to get this done, and then we're going to go over to the uh, to the bee yard and get some uh, get some splits done. We are going to be doing Demaray splits this year. <laughs> it pretty well. Now, I did not realize I had so much drawn comb left over from last year that was not eaten by wax moths. I've only had uh, maybe five frames that had wax moth damage on it. The rest of it was in pretty good shape. Now, I do have 60 frames left over, and that's okay. They're double waxed, and these are decent frames. They were pre-built and sent to me, so I appreciate that. 
but uh, every uh, box here has 20 frames in it. Now, these ones with the zero on them, well, those are all brand new frames, double waxed frames inside those boxes. Everything that's got a plus on it, which are the top three rows right here, those are all brand new frames, half and half with heavily waxed frames and partially drawn frames that I'd provided. And then everything you have on the bottom, the bottom four rows all the way across are checkerboarded with fully drawn frames from last year. And then everything you see on the front row, well, those are all brand new frames. Now, if you look over here, this is the uh, secondary brood chamber. So basically we are going to take the seven frames away from the uh, hive over in the uh, bee yard and move those seven frames into here, put three empties in there. And then that's going to be on top the uh, upper queen excluder. And these are the boxes where we actually pulled all of the drawn combs. So there you go, there you have it. Now we are on our way over to the bee yard to make the magic happen. All right, so before we go to the farm today, I want to share with you an experience that I am, I'm currently having with a, with a very popular product um, out there on YouTube and I guess in the beekeeping market. Now I'm not here to skewer Hive Alive. This is a, a problem that I'm having with Hive Alive pollen patties. Now, I just ordered a 10-pack of these things from Amazon, Amazon Prime. It showed up in two days, and I'm going to the bee yard this morning to make splits. So I thought I would open this box and see what it was that they, that they sent me. Now, before we go any further, I want to share the batch number that I have here. This is the batch that's written on the side of the box. Now, I don't know if that's going to help anybody out there, but if, if Hive Alive is looking at this, it may help them but I don't think knowing the batch number would solve this problem because the problem is a problem with packaging. Um, I don't know whether the product is any good or not. I'm gonna have to reconstitute it with water before I can find out. Um, so let me show you what I've experienced here. I open this up and these pollen patties, they're hard as a rock. I mean, my bees aren't gonna, they're not gonna be able to eat that. That's my thumbnail scraping on this. Um, these things are hard as a rock, and, and that's not what I expect. I expect a pollen patty to be soft, to be moist, to be edible by the bees. That's not what I'm getting here. Um, now, maybe it's, maybe it's me. Maybe this is how they're supposed to be, and, and my bees are going gonna to grow some teeth, and they're going to get in there, and they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna devour these things, and everything's going to be right with the world. So far, I don't believe that that's the case. I believe that these things are dried out, and I can tell you why they're dried out. One, the packaging. They're just throwing these things into a box with no wrapping, nothing but the, the wax paper on top of them. And the second problem is the supply chain. So these pollen patties, uh, apparently they started in Erlinger, yeah, Erlinger, Kentucky, and then, then they went to Greenfield, Indiana, and then they were shipped here to me in Georgia. So these things went from one warehouse to another warehouse before they, sh they were shipped to me. And they've been sitting unwrapped inside of a cardboard box, which is going to wick the moisture out of anything. This problem, in my opinion, my humble opinion is just a consumer who wants to try a product that I've heard nothing but great things about. In my opinion, this problem could have been solved had they just put their product inside of a Ziploc bag or had they wrapped them in foil. Instead, um, these pollen patties were thrown inside of a, a cardboard box and then uh, stacked in a warehouse somewhere where all the water is going to get, all the moisture is going to get wicked out by the cardboard box itself. So there you go, there you have it. I, I don't know that these are going to be bad. I'm going to try to reconstitute them with water. I'm going to spray water on them and hope, hopefully I'll so soften them up and the bees will be able to use them. Um, but uh, Hive Alive, if you're out there, just there's the, there's the batch number and you might want to reconsider how these things are being packaged because this, in my opinion, is unacceptable. I spent $60 on a bunch of dried out pollen patties. I could have made them myself with sugar syrup and pollen sub like I usually do. I just uh, heard a lot of good things about this company. I wanted to give them a shot. And I'm still going to use them and they still might do wonderfully out there. I don't know but I'm going to uh, have to soak them in water a little bit first to get some moisture back into these things. There you go, let's go to the farm. All right, getting ready to head over to the farm and uh, install some of these, uh, these boxes. I do have a helper today, the albino <laughs> beekeeper. He's here, he's, uh, he's gonna help me over here at the farm. We're gonna make uh, quick work of this. I wish my son were here, but he's not here today. So, uh, so it's just myself and, and Brady.
All right, so the plan is as follows. First, I want to let you know that we have a cameraman. I can I can move around, and, and the camera follows me. That's just amazing. I should have a cameraman more often. Anyways, the plan is as follows. Um, each one of these hives that is going to get a split today has got a marking on the top of it, letting me know whether or not to put one or two mediums beside that hive. We're also going to take one deep out there beside each one of the hives that are going to be split. Uh, and the goal is to not do a demoray split on all of the hives, but do a demoray split on the hives that are ready for a split. Um, some of the other hives may get a normal split. Maybe they won't get a split at all. We'll use them as control hives to see how things go throughout the season. Um, but the goal is to get this thing unloaded, everything staged there, and then after that, we're gonna put our gear on, light the smokers, and get going and show you the magic. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, a demoray split means we're going to try to keep all of the bees in the hive. We don't wanna do a split where we actually reduce the, the size and strength of any of the hives. We wanna make sure that all of the bees that are in there now are going to be in there and ready for the flow. Let me, uh, let me get this stuff unstrapped, and then we're all gonna get our gear on and get going. All right, so here are the uh, Hive Alive pollen patties. I have broken them in half and added water to the patties and put them in a gallon-sized Ziploc bag, so they are a little bit malleable now. They're a lot better than they were. I mean, some of them are still a little bit tough. Some of them were a lot harder to rejuvenate than others, but I think the girls are going to be able to get their, their mandibles into them and, and actually eat them at this point. So there you go. So Hive Alive, I've, uh, I've saved the pollen patties. Let's just hope that uh, this uh, Boost 4% pollen patty does what it says and uh, boosts my hives. Again, I have nothing against Hive or Hive Alive. Uh, they probably make great products, but there's something wrong with your supply chain and your packing, something to think about. All right, let's get into the hives. All right, so my son and I, we were out here and we prepped all the boxes. All the queens are in the bottom box, so I don't have to worry about the queen being, being in the top box. I can move this out of the way and get right to work on the bottom. Now the goal, is to remove seven of the frames from the deep hive here leaving only the queen and a brood and food frame in the bottom so three frames in the bottom and then the rest are going to be empties the seven frames that are full from the bottom are going to go onto the top of the hive in this box right here so let's uh let's get in here and see what we can see hi girls Hello. We don't even need to take the top off of, off of this one. We can stay right there. All right. We don't want them to get robbed out. Now the queen is in here somewhere. We're gonna have to find her. Let's have a look. It's a tight fit. Okay, I do not see the queen there. This looks like a good frame that she could lay on. I do not see the queen there. We're gonna go ahead and set this frame aside for right now. See if we can find better prospects. Preferably one that the queen is laying on right now. There's a hive beetle right there. We're gonna go ahead and give it to the old Beetle Smasher 100, the old finger, the phalange. Gave her the phalange. Oh, there's another one right there. Let's see if we can get it to climb up on our hive tool. Well, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. All right, where's the queen? 
she's not on this frame. Let's go down again, have another look. Chances are she's right here where all the bees are concentrated. That is a good food frame right there with a couple of hive beetles on it. Um, I may have to get the beetle sucker 5000 out. All right, let's see what we can do here. Where'd those beetles go? There's one right there. Gone. The other ones went to the other side, I'm sure. Well, they've flown back in the hive. I don't know where they're at. But that looks like a great food frame. But I would like to have one that has honey and pollen on it. That would be the ideal frame for the bottom box. Hello, ladies. Hello. Okay, we have a little bit of pollen on this one, along with a lot of honey. And we have a lot of pollen on this one. So this one is going to go down in the bottom box. Do we see the queen? I do not see her. Okay, but this this uh, this one is going to stay in the hive. Yeah, this one's going to stay in the hive. Okay, that's a keeper. Now that's a nice frame of brood. This one might stay down here. I can hear a chubacabra back in the woods. There's an owl back there. All right, this is a beautiful frame. This has got a lot of nectar, bee bread, and eggs all over it. This is a really good frame. Okay, but I do not see the queen. All right. This one is going to stay down here with the bees. And we need one more with the queen on it. That's all we need. That is another just gorgeous frame. And we're looking for the queen and she has been recently painted so she should be bright red. Unless they cleaned her off, they have a habit of doing that. I don't see her here. Do see some drone brood on there. And that's okay. That just means they're ready to swarm. They're getting ready. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. And where is our queen? Where is she? I see a lot of milk brood down in there, so she's close. I think she's uh, on the side of the box. I do not see her there. Maybe she's here. There she is, right there. There's our queen. She's right on this frame. Let's see if there's room to lay on this frame. There is not. Oh, there's, yeah, there's room on the back, but it looks like there's already eggs there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and capture the queen. Where'd you go, your highness? There you are. So we've got the queen. This frame is going to go here. Actually, we need to put seven frames here. This frame is going to go up here. This frame is going to go in here. This frame has got a lot of room to lay. This one has got the most room to lay. So this one is going to stay down here with the queen. And the rest of them are going in this box right here. go there's a nice frame of brood and all the nurse bees I'm gonna go ahead and okay, this was just freshly laid but I'm gonna take some of these bees put them right in here let them stay down there with the queen I'm 
going to go ahead with a bunch of empties. Again, the point of the Demeray split is to make the bees feel like they've swarmed and keep the bees in the hive until a flow really ramps up. That's the goal. That's the plan. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and let the queen go. Oh, actually, you know what? No, we're not. Not yet. Because I want to get the queen excluder off of this box. There we go. All right, now we're going to let the queen go. Make sure she's still in there. She is. She has room to lay down there. There she goes. She's back down in the hive. Go ahead and remove the frame holder. There we go. One nice and damp pollen patty. I'm going to set that right there. Push it down a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of probiotic. Now this is the same stuff that I used in the in the winter. I'm going to put some of that right on top of these frames too. There we go. Everybody's going to be healthy. Now we're going to put everything back together. As far as this queen is concerned, she has just swarmed. And there's a hive beetle trying to make a getaway. I'm not going to allow that to happen. All right, there you go. That is my rendition of a Demaray split or a Damari split, however you want to say it. Um, the goal is to have this queen build out the brood chamber with her bees. These bees are going to take care of all of the brood that's up here as soon as it hatches out. The goal is for them to start backfilling these boxes with honey and then work their way down as these girls work their way up and hopefully that queen will not get the swarm impulse because now she doesn't have a lot of bees with her. These bees can get down there if they're needed, but she has more than enough bees to keep her and her brood warm. Now, I'm gonna step back and push the cameras back and Brady and I are gonna to get to work and we're gonna to try to get this bee yard done this afternoon. Well, we just finished doing Demaray splits on all of the hives that required a split. Now, there's a couple of them that we did not put Demarays on because they don't have queens, such as the uh, Enigma hive right here. It uh, needs a queen in a bad way. I think what I'm going to do is pull a package off of the uh, either the Red Hive or the Juno hive from the home bee yard and just throw a package with the queen on here and do a, a newspaper combine. Mm -hmm. um, this hive here has a virgin mm -hmm. piping queen. Two queen cells were chewed out, so that one is in good shape. We did find the queen and this girl up front. And the only other queenless hive, besides uh, the Enigma right here, 
is uh, this hive down on the end. Now I had somebody in the comments on the last video say that they saw a queen on a frame and I went back and looked at the marker that they sent and I saw it too, but I got in this hive today and I could not find that queen. Now, it's possible that that was a virgin queen and she's out on a mating flight, but for right now, I'm leaving that hive in the queenless configuration. But the rest of these girls are in great shape. We have uh, a very small hive here that is not a Demeray split. That is actually an empty box sitting on top so they can start drawing it out. They do have a population now, but everybody else that has received a Demeray, they have quite a population in their box. Now the queen is living in the bottom box on three frames and the rest of the frames are empty. Then we uh, have a queen excluder, an empty, in this case here, an empty medium, and then the medium and the deep on the top above the queen excluder in case any of these frames that have eggs on them produce a queen, we can, uh, we can take the queen, use her somewhere else or nix the, uh, the queen cell so that we don't uh, have two queens in one hive because the goal is to keep all of the girls in these hives and backfill all of these top boxes with honey. Now I've never done this before, but you can look it up. There's a lot of folks on the uh, on YouTube that swear by the Demeray method, and I'm going to try it this season and hope that it works. Anyways, with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up. If you have something to say, by all means, please comment. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, do me a favor, take a moment, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to be notified of my new content. I do try to drop a video every Friday. We try to keep it light and have fun. So with all that said, be happy. And I'll see you next week. Take care.